boys. Nothing. <laughs> no. no. Coffee. Coffee. Lots of it. And melted snow. <clears throat> and fresh deer. A little breezy out there today. Good fire. Figured it would take a while to find a couple of really mature quality bucks. Usually this country, this open stuff out here is you really gotta look at a lot of different deer to usually find the real old mature ones. Um, they just get they just get shot and they just don't have that age class. But somehow, some way, we found two old crusties that everything we could have asked for, I think. I think one of those bucks is just a, you know, the one you got Brian last night, it was like a 29 inch, just giant. And then that uh, old crazy horn one that I got, both old bucks, so really couldn't be happier. Which again, I, I figured it would take us 10 days at least to find a couple like that. So we're way ahead of the curve. Now we, um, we're gonna try to pack it out. And we've got one more one more hunt, and that's with my daughter. And then we'll see how that one goes. We've had some um, good weather days on this hunt, like yesterday, and then some real cruddy, windy. Today feels like it's just gonna be a blustery mess out there, but um, weather's been cold, really cold at night, and then Decent yesterday, it must have been 50 degrees out yesterday, so you don't expect those kind of days, but um, that's worse, for sure. You stuck me with worse. <laughs> so yeah, the wind is pretty relentless out here. You just expect it. You're hoping it's 10 knots and not 30, um, but it's, it's usually pretty constant. It's actually surprising if you get a day without wind out here just usually just it's open open plains so my worst, my worst pack out with you is tar new zealand tar, yeah. and cape cape all the meat horns i don't know what that thing was just that was just one hell of a load i walked like this the whole time mm -hmm. um i don't know i haven't had any issues with a uh you know a tp collapsing coming down you know, you got the center pole and we just stake everything out really well. Now out here, there's no rocks, but it's got this mud to it and the mud holds those stakes really well. So we're not able to rock it at all, but like this, this uh, red cliff, I don't know how many guy outs it's got. It must, we've probably got it guyed out in four different places, um, 10, 12 stakes down. So it holds up really, really well. And, um, you know, if you can find a spot out of the wind, great. But usually some of the flat spots aren't out of the wind. Um, we've kind of been 50-50 on this one. So um, right now it's not gusting too much. It's, it's a little breezy out there. But, yeah, no worries. I have no worries about these, these teepee-style tents holding up in the wind. I've just never had one collapse on me. As long as you stake it right. Anything else just feels fine now. That one with Brad this year was bad too. The elk, 140 pounds. He carried 160. This isn't bad. What do you think, Ryan? Looks good. Looks good. Victory! Two big public land bucks. Love it. Time to sweat. And burgers and fries. Right. Um, being this is one more public land hunt, um, you know, usually these these areas are they get looked at a lot. It's all public land. Anybody, everybody can be out in these places, and so typically, what I've found is um, you just got to go a little harder, go a little farther, glass your eyeballs off, and just put in more time than everybody else. For some reason, especially in open country, 
A lot of guys get trapped in their vehicles. They, they pull out to a ridge and they glass and or they get off their quad and they glass and they back on and they're moving and you know kind of what we've seen with this trip is you really got to get in to the country and that's why we just live back here off our backs. I, I don't know a whole lot of folks treat this type of country like this but um, but that's what we do and I think that's why we're able to typically find older age class bucks um, you know this these areas like I said in the beginning usually you'll have to look at a hundred bucks because there's no shortage of deer but you might have to look at a hundred bucks before you find a real old giant that uh, you know just covering country and finding those little looks and crannies that that hold a big one that's kind of the goal in this country that we're in glassing it's all about glassing and just being diligent um, deer up and down this time of year you know we're we're mid-ish uh, November so you expect them to be rutting some days are better than others um, with the weather you know when the winds blowing they typically just stay down on the leeward side of whatever um, mountain that ridge is blown against sometimes they're hard to find but um, you know I think with the weather we'll have days like unexpected days usually you want cold cold nights frozen and those bucks sometimes they're rutting all day long yesterday we had a day that kind of finally broke and it actually warmed up a little bit and I think we saw more bucks yesterday than we've seen every day we've been out here they were everywhere they were rutting hard um, and these bucks are starting to get a little tired of uh, both our bucks were so sleepy we actually picked them up in their beds and um, they putting their heads down napping just tired from an all-night rut so um, yeah that's what's cool that's why I love this this country and this time of year in this place is you usually get to see a lot of action a lot of bucks just doing their thing lip curling chasing does um, you know not paying attention as much but uh, yeah, it's just overall, it's a really fun, fun trip. And when you get weather like this, you never know. We've we've had days 20 below, 30 below in this type country. And they can come in really quick. And those can get a little miserable, but, um, you know, we always carve off 10 days just for the fact you're going to have a couple few in there that are solid. And um, so far, we've had some really good couple of good days amongst the five that we've been out here which is about right so we're packing out here and we sat down for a little break and ryan started going through video of deer last year and he said there was a really wide buck and he, he you you were kind of saying like yesterday you're like you thought you might recognize him Check this out. Yeah, I'm looking at the same exact buck from last year, and he's, um, I was really having a hard time not shooting this buck last year, because he's just a giant. Um, but I had seen a different one, and I was fo completely focused on him. Even though I made two stocks in on this buck, and I was just starting to squeeze, and I just let off, and I wanted to make sure I went with the buck that I'd seen first and he had he was just a really cool buck but yeah I got video of him right here <laughs> look at how wide he is it's big old three by four last year too would so, you say he's bigger this year or last year I don't know I don't know a little bigger last year last year I figured he was probably a 30 um this one's real close you know so it's hard to say it's really hard to say they they look so similar but yeah, it's funny. He was only probably a mile away from here when I picked him up last year. Great buck. Wow, that video is cool as he's walking away. Same buck, three by four with eye guards? Yep. yep. When we were coming in to this hunt on the way, way here, Ryan popped that video up and showed it to James and I leaned over while I was driving and I looked at that and I was like you didn't shoot that buck you didn't shoot that you're you're something else man I was like what I say I go 
I'm shooting that buck. I shoot that buck. I shoot that buck. <laughs> <laughs> How crazy is it that this ends up being the buck we we got? That's weird, huh? I mean, he's just a giant roaming this little core area here, so super cool. There's no way he could have got bigger last year. He's got to be starting to go back the other way. He's just so old. Can I see that video again? About the same dates. Yeah, that's him, dude. Right? Yeah. Three, he, three on his right, eye guards, four on his left, really wide. He looks a little bigger last year, but I could I, be he's walking away. Yeah, I saw him from a bunch of different angles. You know, honestly, like, the other buck I was going for had nice long tines and some stickers. Mm -hmm. This one had the crabby up front, mm -hmm. but he just, he was an old, he was an old buck last year. You know. Yeah, he looked a little Google. deeper forked last year than he is this year. Same frame, same everything, same formation, but he's just got deeper forks, I think. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? I don't know. It's close. We'll, we'll have to pull it up on the computer and zoom and really in, look at it. But I watched that buck for several different days, probably three separate days. Oh, dude, days. he's, <laughs> it's the same buck, dude. It's the <laughs> same buck. It's crazy. Wild. He's he's just awesome. So different from Ryan's buck, you know, the buck you just shot. He's he's got uh, all that junk and mass and stickers. But is he just just at his ears or just inside? He's gosh, I'll have to look at him again. He's just he's out past the ears on the top because of those kickers and how it flares. Right. But yeah, he's not this swooping classic mule deer like this one is uh it's not that boxy look either he's just he's kind of like he goes out and then it just crowns and you get all this mass and trash up there it's real unique you don't find those once in a lifetime type bucks especially out in this country they're really hard to to locate but yeah when you find one you better put your put your focus on him so one of the things that we do in this type of country, public lands, you know, there's roads almost everywhere. Um, so we try to get off those as much as we can. We just find little spots that are, you know, at least three to five miles off of any road where guys are looking. You don't have to be that far, but um, we go as deep as we can. So. Uh, this time of year we always have the stove. This time we have the big uh, red cliff, seek outside red cliff. Three guys, we knew it's going to be cold so we brought the bigger stove. This is the uh, SXL stove. Um, wood was going to be the challenge. Um, I think I told you guys going in that it was tough to find wood out here because there's no trees. There's little cedars and a couple of junipers here and there but that's about it. So. Pretty much the only places you find wood are down in these cuts where there's um you know a couple of dead cedars but um yeah this is definitely the preferred way to go out here keep everything on your back still running these dyneema um seek shelters and they're so lightweight that this thing is massive and we're all comfortable in here with three guys um and we still we've got a giant pile of firewood plenty of room really comfortable if the weather does pin you down out here for a day or two it's not a big deal especially when you have the stove but um, yeah we just treat this hunt like any wilderness backcountry type hunt where you're going in and the goal is to get away from folks and look at critters that just aren't getting looked at or haven't been looked at for years you know what did it for me on this buck was when we spotted him the very first time there was three bucks and you saw that mega too. Yeah. And there was this giant fork buck that was, I mean, for a fork and horn, just, just a mega fork, which is always cool because they're so unique. Um, and we were looking at that buck and then all of a sudden from below, there's a doe, three bucks, maybe another doe. There was a gaggle of deer. And, uh, and then this guy just kind of Boop, 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 popped up and then turned and looked down the hill 
and his neck and shoulders and his white white face I was like okay that's an old old buck and he just looked down I'm like he's not deep tined but look at that <laughs> look at that frame and you just knew he was old and then when you saw him in perspective because it's hard to tell how big a deer is but when you see him next to a doe or another buck that's pretty old and he just is so much bigger that perspective you were able to see it and, and you're the color like of the bodies on these old ones just gray it's whole body he looks like a um, kind of like a high mountain buck you know big old buck that lives up in the tops we used to find you know 250 275 pound mule deer in washington up in the north you know north country way high and that's the same look that this buck's got he's got that gray all the way through which is unique out here. When they've got that gray face, Roman nose, heavy bases, sometimes they get a little spindly up top, but the heavy bases and brow tines, that's all you can ask for. <laughs> like I mentioned, finding wood is always a struggle in these type places. Uh, fortunately, the wood you find out here, when you do find some, old cedars that have died, they're weathered, because this place gets beaten down with wind and weather and cold. And so they're extremely dry. They're very, you know, hardened wood. Hard to break branches off, actually. So one thing I do is I always pack a saw on these type hunts. There's there's areas, um, alpine type areas, where you don't need a saw. You can just use your foot, snap branches. But out here, this wood is so bone dry that it's really hard to break, and uh, it's just tough and dense. And so. I just bring this little collapsible saw and I don't think we'd be warm right now if, if we didn't have the saw. There's no way we'd be breaking branches big enough. And that's the thing, you know, we've got a bunch of small stuff that you can always typically get, but these stoves, if you just wanna, you know, fill it and walk away and just not have to keep filling it, we get these pieces of wood that are, you know, three, four inches in diameter. We got, this type stuff and um, it's just this thing burns it's just a really hard hard wood and so without the saw we're not getting this and we're burning twigs and just constantly feeding that fire so um, definitely it's a must to have a saw out here fortunately we grabbed it we almost didn't but Ryan saw is ghetto by the way I think he's had it 20 years or something it looks like from 1985 it looks like body glove like the logo what's it called like saw viver saw viver yeah it has a nice 80s feel it's to great. it it's great. but uh it's time for a new saw because uh it finally um finally finally um broke a little bit it's still working yeah still works. but uh it's a hazard yeah i've had that saw i i was I was actually thinking, I probably had that saw at least 25 years, um, thinking back to some old Idaho trips where I used to pack it in with me. So yeah, she's old, but it's done good. It's got, it's got really good teeth on it too. So it buzzes through this stuff in no time where a lot of saws wouldn't. All right, back to the meat tree. Grab my buck, load them both up. Still got a lot of miles left in the day, but bucks on our back now well time to load up we got two mule deer between the three of us and camp it's gonna be a rough hike out is it mostly downhill not at all <laughs> it's almost all uphill oh well Whew. here we go oh well it's getting late but we're only like three miles from the truck. We made good time. Looks like, uh, whew. This pack is heavy though. My legs and hips are burning. But hallelujah, the truck is close. You can almost see it just over this hill. Still miles away, but it's a little white dot. That looks freaking good. That. 
So I just I took about half of a back strap from my muley buck. Got a little trim off of it and um, put a little kinders on there, put a little sea salt, and then just kind of slathered it in butter. And that's just gonna go right on the grill. That's so it. That's, you just put a rub on it. Ate, Did you put any oil on it or anything? No, I just got this this butter will melt and it'll just kind of glaze it. But um, no, I just got some kinders on there, some sea salt. And that that's kinders, just the back strap. That's just back strap. We already ate my tenderloin up in camp. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you have Brian Call in the house, you go with the back strap. The good stuff. This is cool, man. So we're, uh, we're at Lamper's house, the stealthy residence. We just got done with the hunt back, back to civilization. And um, we're going to cook up some mule deer on the old birch barrel here. I've never, I've never, I've seen this once, but I've never used it. And uh, I thought you guys might like to see this. It's pretty cool. Um, this would be cool. Like you have a bonfire on your deck. <laughs> uh, do you worry about it like burning down the house? Oh, no, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's really like versatile. You can run it with just briquettes, you know, like a typical barbecue. You can use it several ways. You can also just take the barrel off. It's real easy to just detach and just have that set on the ground and then just have a, you know, a barrel down there that you cook from. But um, it's on this stand, this tripod stand, which is pretty cool for like a home barbecue. We've run it on the deck. We pull it out front. Um, if the wind is ripping back here, we pull it to the front of the house, but it's not super lightweight. It's definitely not the best for like packing around in places, but uh, I've taken it out on hunts. I just throw the barrel in the back of the truck and um, bring a little bit of wood and real, real cool just to cook, cook up some fresh meat out there on the road. Just pull the barrel out of the back, set it on the ground and get a little fire going. This tray inside here, you can pull it really high so the flame is right there at the grill, or you can dump it way down real easily. That's this lid here? No, the, actually the, the tray Crazy inside man. that's holding either the briquettes or the... I because, saw them, you cooking out of the top. Yeah, so what we do, like this lid here, it's all adjustable. This little grip handle, it's kind of cool. It's just uh, real easy to drop drop this down onto it like right now the actual grate is up here oh yeah so then you drop her down and you just spin the lid a little bit now your grate's there so we got the fire cooked down a little bit we'll toss the meat right on the grill and um, get it a good sear drop the uh, the lid down Got a little <clears throat> gauge up here if you want. You want to look at the temperature. See, so you can get a good smoke. It's got a bunch of little um, venting. Keep all that smoke inside. But it gives it a really good flavor. Really good flavor. So you're cooking with wood though. That's like yep. full on wood. Do you have like specific mm -hmm. wood you chop down that you get from somewhere? Just any clean wood? Any trees. clean wood. I, I get a bunch of, um, you know, I just get permits to go up and cut all the down stuff on these fires that we have all up in the mountains. So um, whatever's down and dry, and there's a lot of it, I just grab what's there. And um, it's the thing, like it doesn't take much to get this thing super hot and it holds the heat really well. So I think when we burn the most wood is when we got like all the girls over here and the kids and they're want to do s'mores for a couple <laughs> hours <laughs> yeah it's tamped down already check that out it's all smoking it smells good it, it smells like like when we're cooking out in the mountains yeah exactly it's kind of like cooking over a campfire really but yeah you can see how that smoke just gets trapped up in there mm -hmm. and so when i put the meat on it uh, it just gives it a really good smoky flavor it seems like cooking with this high heat though you got to be careful mm -hmm. because you know and it can be volatile too because the heat yeah. can get hotter or colder pretty quick how do you regulate Definitely. the heat so that's why like this tray inside here like i can drop that way down into the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so, you know, obviously I'm not going to get as much heat really close to the top of the grate here. But uh, I can also pull it way up, which I do if I'm just running um, briquettes. I'll pull that significantly higher. But when I'm burning wood, I set it down in there a bit. And I'll get that fire going and let it burn down for about 20 minutes and um, before I start tossing. We, we do a lot of peppers and vegetables and stuff like that out here, zucchini, and um, to go along with the meat. So, and we'll run, like Hill, she makes like apple crisps and just desserts on there with like a Dutch oven style. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I tell you, uh, when you throw it on there, how long do you leave it on there? Um, and what's the goal? Cause you get to sort of charcoal the outside a yeah, little bit. Yeah, so really all I'm doing is I'm searing the outside, getting a good sear to it. And then I'll dump that pan down, drop the lid and just let it heat up. And I think you and I are both the same. We kind of like it a little bit red in the middle, not really. Yep. Really well done. Um, we do have James in here. We're probably going to have to jerky one of these pieces, so he'll eat it. But <sighs> worried about those germs and things. <laughs> germs? What are germs? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, it doesn't take long. How was the pack out? It was a good one. I mean, it was, it had some pain involved in that. Heavy packs, it was cold, windy, some post holing in the snow. I mean, it was a good pack out. It was but, like- But pretty mild, right? It was mild just because, um, yeah, the terrain was milder than we're used to probably, I'd say, but- Yeah, like normally our pack outs are more grueling than that. Right. It was a long distance, but it was kind of, Mild country, Mild country with a few yeah. steeps. The sun was out. The sun was out. The sun was out. That's a fail. That's a fail on our part. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It usually is the middle of the night. Yeah, that was weird. <clears throat> it wasn't a night hack. I didn't, I didn't mind that. I, I like didn't navigating either. in the daylight. I didn't either. I've been with Ryan a few times where we're in the bushes with full packs and we're like, <laughs> where do we go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that night hike with Lusk when we're all cliffed out from the bear and we got back to our camping spot just as the sun was coming up and i was like okay that hike should have taken us three hours it took us like six yeah it takes way more <laughs> at nighttime for sure you end up taking a few wrong turns totally <laughs> yeah it's interesting though yeah i just tossed a couple more pieces of wood on there get it even a little bit hotter for the sear and getting a little smoke to it kind of drop that lid down i like that smoky flavor so it's good. It won't take long. You know what I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get some hot water and have some of those electrolytes mm -hmm. stuck on it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like tea. Oh, bad idea. Thanks for watching this week's video. We cannot thank you enough for all the support you've been giving us. It's been awesome. We'd like to know what you think of this video because it's quite a bit different than what we normally produce. Leave a comment below and let us know. Uh, also, if you do leave a comment below and you subscribe to this channel and you like the video, you'll be entered to win a brand new set of Peaks Sticks, Sissy Sticks, and Gators. Also, we're giving away a rifle cover. If you want to get in on that, it's a Stealthy Hunter rifle cover. If you want to get in on that, share the video on your Instagram story and tag us. It's Brian underscore call and it's Stealthy Hunter. Stealthy. And that's been fun. We've been getting a lot of engagement there. And it's just really cool to see all the participation. And um, it's really exposing the content to a lot of people who uh, don't spend a lot of time on YouTube or maybe don't know that we're producing films. And it's been really neat to, to see the engagement there. So, And finally, this week, we are going to give away a Leupold rifle scope, a VX3i, 3.5 power to 10 power, 44 millimeter objective rifle scope. It's a pretty sweet scope, lightweight, compact, and built to uh, go through, well, explosions and war. I mean, it's built tough. It's a Leupold. <laughs> so um, we're giving that away. But here's the deal. We're going to give that away on Parler. Some of you may not know what Parler is. You have to download the app 
And uh, this is for those that, that want to try this. But we've been on Parler. I've been on Parler since June. And it's kind of like a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram How I describe hybrid. to people, it's, it's not a socialist media platform. <laughs> it's a social media platform. There you have it, folks. Uh, we really do want to support uh, those platforms that are uh, pro First and Second Amendment. We like the freedom of speech, and uh, Parler's been, been we've been uh, following along on Parler platform, and it's a platform that's not censored like some of the other platforms that are out there, pro American right now, and so we're on there, and we've been posting a little bit here and there. We're going to continue to post on there, but I think there's like three followers on on our, our Parler. So if you want to get in on this rifle scope, you have pretty good pretty good chance of of uh, of winning this scope. All you have to do is follow us on Parlor, and then we're going to select uh, from the, the the folks that are following us there a random winner and give away this <laughs> rifle scope. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at your followers. You got a good chance on Parlor, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's on. No hunters are really on Parlor right now. Yeah, that, no. that that I've seen. But, but I we're going to bring them over. I think. Um, hey, hey, if you want in on uh, rifle scope, get on Parlor. Start uh, following along over there. They're not as communist as, well, your Facebook and your Instagram. The new terms and conditions on Instagram bother me. I don't like the invasion of privacy. You don't like them having constant access to your camera, Brian? I, I don't like what, Why not? They're, what they're doing, um, Big Brother. So I'm looking at, um, yeah, I, I would love for people to hop on the parlor. And we want to encourage people to do that with a giveaway. So there you have it, Leopold Rifle Scope. Get on parlor and follow us there. My parlor handle is Brian Call Gritty, all one word. Brian Call Gritty, all one word on parlor. Get on there. Join the party. Last week, we told you we were going to give away a rifle cover to someone who shared our video on Instagram. And that winner is Callie Bowhunter. Callie Bowhunter, C A L I underscore underscore Bowhunter. <laughs> And uh, he really wanted that. Yeah, he did. (laughs) He did. Uh, He said the level of cinematography on the gritty hunts is hands down the best in the industry. Even if you don't hunt, I beg you to watch this video. You will thank me later. (laughs) Very cool. Uh, We just randomly, you know, went through a list and grabbed one. And Callie Bowhunter, you are it. So we're going to ship a brand new uh, stealthy rifle cover your way. Stealthy hunter rifle cover your way. And on YouTube. We randomly flipped through the comments section and we found a gentleman that won this week. That's Justin Hooling. And Justin, you are the proud winner of a set of crispy boots. Uh, I believe the Nevada is what we've got. So we just need to know your size. We should exchange some emails. So we should talk. Yeah, we should talk. So Justin says, man, I just can't get enough. I'm at the point now that I end my work week looking forward to the next gritty film being released on Sundays. For the record, it wouldn't matter the content you guys put out, be it hunting or podcasts or the drive home or the kitchen work. If this was a show that aired every day, let me just say I'd get nothing done. Can't wait till next week's video of Ryan and his daughter prepare for the dad tears. I'm pretty sure I'm driving my wife and close friends crazy with how much I'm talking about all the gritty films and podcasts, but I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent job, my friends. Along with uh, what Brett commented, I too carry what I refer to as my oh crap bag. And it's literally a camo hip bag. All my emergency stuff goes in there. Where I, where I live, we do a lot of boat hunts from the ocean. And if for some reason I can't get back to the main boat, I will have that bag to get me through till I can get out. Brian Ryan and the crew, thanks again for all you guys do. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Justin, and thank you to everyone who has left us a comment on YouTube. It's awesome. We're trying to read them all. I got a little behind just with the Christmas stuff going on right now. Trying to read all the comments and and respond to questions that you guys leave there. Mm -hmm. And we really do greatly appreciate all that support. And it's fun to see the channel growing like it's growing. I'm really excited for you all to watch the Paley Hunt next week. The father, daughter, wife, family uh, interactions great, and it's just a killer hunt, man. We saw some deer, saw a ton of deer. Yeah, we got on some stocks, 
some close ones. And I'll this say is like this. one of those youth hunts where they go out there and they're like, I don't want to hit that giant one. I don't want to shoot that giant <laughs> yeah, one. Paley's definitely selective. Oh, she is her dad's yeah. daughter. Paley's buck is deceptive. You know, you look at it and you're like, oh, you know, because he's he's uh, he's super. He's got the biggest bases of all the bu- of the bucks from this tr- mm-hmm. these trips. Um, one of the oldest bucks and the meanest bucks in the area. Age, he's just a really cool, cool buck. He's a, he's a badass deer for sure. So he's a he's a neat deer, but you wouldn't think it until you get a close up. When you really get on his antlers and stuff, and you take a close up look, you're like, oh. Or you see him on his hoof chasing mm-hmm. away bucks that are bigger than him, but just he's got the the attitude and the, and the age. He's just a brute. So it's cool to see such a mature old deer taken, uh, and and for it to be her first deer. So I think people are gonna like it. This buck is majestic. When you watch the video, I just find him, he's a majestic deer. There's just something about him, his aura, that's just, and he's posturing. He's, you get, we'll get some good rutting video on this next one. So I think you're all going to enjoy it. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment, like this video, subscribe, get on Parlor, do all the things, win all the stuff. Thanks. We appreciate it. Stay gritty. Oh, yeah.